Welcome to KJV Cafe, where we explore great truths from God's holy word in a simple, down-to-earth fashion. Romans 10:17 shows us where faith comes from. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Let's grow our faith together in the cafe today. Our program is hosted by Pastor Clark Covington and brought to you by Heartland Ministries. Grab your Bible and a hot cup of coffee or tea and join us now as we explore God's holy word. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you for joining me. I don't know if you heard that in the background. My son was yelling, he's almost done because I'm recording a message and he wanted to, he wanted to show daddy his water gun. So, hey, let's get to it here. We're in Psalms, the book of Psalms. Psalm chapter one, it's a beautiful, beautiful scripture here. Uh, and I'm just so glad that you've joined me here today. I always like to thank everyone for listening. I know you have a lot of options, amen. And I'm just so thankful that you join us on KJV Cafe uh, and Facebook. We're on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash KJV Cafe. That's enough promotion here. Diving into the Psalm. Psalm chapter one, uh, we're looking at it. It's only six verses and it's so powerful because it deals with the godly and the ungodly. And what happens to the godly? What happens to the ungodly? And it's a man after God's own heart, a man after God's own heart, David, writing it so succinctly, so beautifully, and helps us understand, uh, really, by this Holy Spirit-inspired writing, what we need to know about how we live for God. In the first message here, um, I, I preached on how blessed is the man that seeks the Lord. And here, we're going to talk about cursed is the one that is ungodly. So we're talking about what the result is or what happens when you are living ungodly. You think you're going to get away with it? You won't. And here is why. So let's dive into the Psalm here. Psalm one, uh, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. Here we have this beautiful psalm, six verses long, kind of about half devoted to the godly and half devoted to the ungodly. And we see here the first half, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So here David is telling us that you are blessed when you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. That means someone that is not living for God. It doesn't say the evil, because I think people will substitute this word ungodly for evil and say, well, I don't walk in the council. I'm not given advice by evil people. My friend that happens to not be saved or my relative or whoever, they love me. They care about me. They're good people, even though they're not saved. Well, the Bible tells us that none are good, none are righteous, not one. That's first. And secondly, it doesn't say evil. It says ungodly. So blessed is the man or woman that walketh not in the counsel, the advice of the ungodly. That's anyone that is not saved. Be certain that you're not walking in the advice of the ungodly. And it can be a very difficult thing. You have a friend from childhood that you care a lot about that really has opinions for you. And they tell you, hey, I care about you. I want you to do dot, dot, dot. But if they're not saved, if they're ungodly, they could be leading you in a very bad, dangerous direction nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. We aren't to take advice from the ungodly. We aren't to stand in the way of sinners. You aren't supposed to be spending time around uh, sinners that you wouldn't, you know, normally have to. I mean, you can't like avoid, Paul writes in the Bible that in order to avoid all sin, you'd have to leave earth, amen? So you can't avoid all sin, but at the same time, you don't have to choose to go around sinners. Uh, Maybe it's a concert, maybe it's a movie, maybe it's a... uh, a, a party, maybe it's a happy hour, maybe it's a conference, but there's something maybe that, that uh, the world wants you to do that you don't have to do. Maybe it's a sports team, whatever it is, and don't do it. If you're standing in the way of sinners, you're hanging around a bunch of people that are cussing up a storm, that are living like the world, guess what? If you stand in that way, what's going to happen to you? You're going to be just like them. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Over there, either being scornful yourself, as in sitting in that seat and becoming that, 
becoming a scorner, being like these sinners, or simply just hanging out with those that are that way. Again, if you have, I mentioned this last episode, five people that are godly, they don't cuss, they don't, they try not to covet, they don't gossip, uh, they don't, they don't lust, they don't watch inappropriate things, uh, they, they're sober. If you have those five people and you're around them all the time as the sixth person, are you going to be more or less godly? Well, you'll be more godly because you have a good influence around you and vice versa. If you have five ungodly people that cuss like a sailor that are not sober, they're drinking and doing drugs that are gossiping nonstop that are living in sin and rebellion to God's ways. Are you going to become more or less like them? You're going to become more like them. It's a very clear picture. Amen. So we are blessed when we stay away from that. And it says verse two, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So we are blessed then by being delighted in God's word. And that, that blessing comes how? It says verse three, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So that's the blessing, amen? We stay away from the sinful people, even their advice and all that. We don't scorn, We don't act scornful. We, we, we live a separate life, amen? We try to do our best to live holy. We're delighted in the law of the Lord. We're studying it. We're thinking about it day and night. That means all the time, amen? And the, the fruit of that is prosperity. We are prospering. That could mean just simply being healthy. It could mean having uh, wealth. It could mean... Uh, having peace in your heart. It could be all three. You know, uh, prosperity really is relative, you know, and, and God's ways are not man's ways. So just because you say, well, I'm doing my best to stay away from the sinners and to live godly, and I'm still not prospering. Well, maybe you are, and you just don't know it. Amen. But here we have the latter part of this verse. This is for the ungodly. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. And so the godly here are given a a set of instructions and what they're going to receive from those instructions if they follow it is this great blessing. Amen. That image, that visual image of that tree by the water, planted by the water, having all that resources that it needs, having strength and bearing fruit. It's a beautiful visual image. But the ungodly are not so. They're like the chaff. So that's a lot different than a tree, which the wind driveth away. Now, you may not be an expert on chaff, but I know a little bit about chaff. Uh, for years, I roasted coffee because of my allergies and just other stuff. I haven't done much, much, too much coffee roasting lately. I hope to get back into it sometime soon. But for years, I roasted coffee, and that coffee, those coffee beans were green, and then you put them under a lot of heat in a in a uh, chamber of some kind, and you kind of rotate it, and those the sugars and so forth, I'm not a scientist, obviously, but the sugars, they do something, heat up, I guess, and it browns the bean and the bean literally cracks. And when that bean cracks, that coffee bean cracks, it creates chaff. And some coffee, I think like Ethiopian maybe or South American, I don't know, some of these coffees, when you roast them, they create a lot of chaff. And that chaff is literally like, um, it is, I don't if you've never seen chaff before, it is like a very light uh, uh, piece of paper, like a little crumb paper crumb that fall, that kind of falls away. It's kind of like, imagine a peanut shell made out of paper that would easily fall into the wind. And you literally can get rid of that chaff when you just, you know, get some air in your lungs and blow it away. You can just blow the chaff away. And the ungodly here in verse four says, are like chaff, which the wind driveth away. And so imagine a tree and the roots and how deeply rooted that tree is and how set that foundation is for that tree with that water. That tree's not going anywhere, amen. That tree is rooted in deep, will be there a long time. Now imagine chaff in the wind. And again, it is like the lightest version of paper, little pieces, almost like confetti that's up in the wind. It just blows away. Amen. It is gone. It is not rooted in. That's not good. Amen. You, if you are gone, if you're getting blown away by God, that's not a good thing. Verse five, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Now, I believe here, verse five, might reference here, stand in the judgment, the Bema seat. So the believer, those that are saved, uh, will stand in the judgment uh, uh, which is not the white throne judgment. That's where the unsaved go. 
but it's called the Bema seat or the judgment seat of Christ, where Christ gives out rewards, amen, uh, that you're, th- those things that you did for the Lord out of the working of the Holy Spirit, you didn't do it for pride, you didn't do it for recognition or benefit for yourself, but you did it earnestly for the Lord. Those things that you did here on earth are judged and rewarded, and you're given a reward, kind of like an Olympic medal ceremony. And I've told people before, you know, I've given a little thought to it. If I received a medal, even like a bronze medal at the Olympics, I'd never take that thing off. I'd wear that all the time. I'd just be so excited to have that. Amen. Uh, and so that's what heaven's going to be like in a way you get crowns and so forth and you're rewarded for what you do. And here it's saying the ungodly will not have that benefit. They will not be at that judgment. They will not have any association with the righteous sinners. There'll be no sinners in the congregation of the righteous. This is future tense. This is what happens after death. Amen. You will no longer be with the righteous. So the ungodly will be like chaff blown away in the wind you will not be there for the reward, the beam of seat, and you will not be with the righteous. Verse six, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So we know uh, God knows the way of the righteous, amen, both how you are to act as righteous people and where you're going to end up as righteous people. But where are you going to end up as an ungodly person? You're going to perish. What does that mean? That means you're going to end up at the white throne judgment. Amen. That means, hey, you're going to be resurrected. A lot of people don't know this. Uh, Everyone gets resurrected. Amen. The day of the judgment, the white throne judgment, you're resurrected from the grave. So there you are in some kind of sleep or some kind of hell state. You're resurrected to be judged. All your evil deeds are put before you. And then you head off to the lake of fire to be in eternity separated from God. And I believe one of the worst parts of hell, if not the worst part of hell, will not be the flames, though those will be bad and those will torment you, the worst part will be separation from God. Because in that eternal state, we will realize that number one, we're never going to die. And number two, we're going to truly realize our need and dependency upon God like we've never realized before. And hell will be a separation from God. And yet think about the glory of the righteous. They will be forever with God. They will be co-heirs with Christ. They will be praising him there. They'll be able to see him. They'll no longer have to have faith that he's real. They're going to see that he's real. Amen. They're going to walk the streets of gold with him. They're going to be able to touch his nail scarred hands. I believe we'll see the blood of Jesus in heaven uh, memorialized. I believe there'll be great worship and praise of Jesus, great singing and, and just recognition of what he's done for all eternity. Amen. And we'll be with all the other believers to praise together, God. What's better than praising God alone? When we're with a group of believers and the Spirit's there, the Bible says where the Spirit is, there's liberty. Amen. I can't wait. Amen. For all believers of all time to be together in one place, praising the one that saved us. Now that's heaven. And that is going to be a beautiful, beautiful place. But the ungodly, they're not going to be there. And here David tells us in Psalm 1, wake up. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. David's telling you, look, their fate is like chaff in the wind. They're going to blow away. They're going to be gone. And they're going to a place you don't want to go. So don't go around them. Delight in the law of the Lord day and night. Meditate on it day and night. And you'll have that strength and you'll have that fruit and you'll, you'll prosper if you do those things. But the ungodly are like chaff in the wind. They're not going to stand in the judgment. They're not going to be with the righteous. The Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Understand this truth. If you ignore this truth, it's it's not going to help you. Amen. If you understand this truth, it can help you. So if you've been saved, turn to God, meditate on his word, get away from the ungodly. And if you haven't been saved, make today the day of salvation. Amen. T- trust Christ today for your uh, eternal salvation because tomorrow is not promised. And thank God for Psalm 1. Thank God for that beautiful language and that beautiful scripture to help us understand that we will be blessed if we turn to God and we get away from the things and ways of this world and we seek his ways and we trust in his ways that we will prosper in ways that no one can imagine. That's only by the will and love of God. Thank you so much for listening today. Have a wonderful day. Take care. God bless and amen. 
Thanks for listening to this episode of KJV Cafe. Have a question for Pastor Clark? Email him directly at clark at enduringpromise.org or visit kjvcafe.com and click the envelope button on the homepage. Our program is hosted by Pastor Clark Covington and brought to you by Heartland Ministries. We'll close today with Psalm 119, verses 166 through 168. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee.